in your semantics manual. Okay. I explained task two before, and now I'm going to explain task two. Sorry, I explained task one before, this one, and now I'm going to explain task two. Task two says that words are not neutral, and I was explaining that we, us, as students of semantics, need not to react to words. Okay? So, what is the task itself? The task it's itself is this one. Write how the choice of words attempts to sway you. Okay? <coughs> so this is exactly what you need to do. Write or explain how the choice of words in the following two uh, line, uh, sentences attempts to sway you. So let's analyze the first one. It's like um, ABC Color and what's the other one? Popular. Diario Popular and Diario ABC Color. They have different styles, writing styles, and they have different adjectives that they use. The same happens here. So after plummeting 10 points during the course of the morning's trading, the stock market struggled back slowly during the first hour after lunch for a net gain of 16 points. So what do we need to take into account in order to um, react to this text? To me, this text would be neutral, but because of the adjectives that they chose, they carefully chose, then it's not neutral anymore. If it says plummeting so that means going down very very quickly and then to struggle back slowly it gives a picture an image in my mind okay but basically it is a very for it's a formal I would say color like uh, text let's read number two which is the same piece of news it says the price of gold skyrocketed three dollars an ounce today yesterday it had declined three dollars so again the words that are chosen create an impact on the reader that's why the task is under the heading words are not neutral okay which is the 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 word that that gets our attention skyrocketed. So that, that means going up very, very, very fast, right? And it's very informal, okay? And, but then after the informal uh, sentence, we get a formal one. Yesterday it had declined $3, okay? So again, what was the task again? To write how the choice of words, plummeting, struggled back slowly, skyrocketed, declined, attempts to sway you. That is the task. That is what you are supposed to write about. That's why in the instructions it says, in the following examples, what seems to be the attitude or view of the writer in each case. Okay, so we need to pay careful attention to this. Next one. Next one is not two sentences, but four instead. So let, let's read the four sentences. Number one says, the judge ordered explanation of GM's alternative engine usage. For me, neutral, neutral piece of news. But then it says the judge ordered disclosure of GM's alternative engine usage. So an explanation has a neutral or even positive connotation, but disclosure is much more negative. Disclosure implies 
that there was a secret that someone that General Motors was hiding something. So that that would be disclosure. Notice again how the choice of words attempts to sway you. Number three, the judge ordered disclosure of GM's engine substitution practices because before it says alternative engine usage and here it says engine substitution practices. Okay, they, they make a difference in meaning. Yes. And the last one, the judge ordered the exposure of GM's engine switching practices. Switching and substitution. Substitution, more technical, more formal. Switching, more informal. And maybe something is hidden. So notice that these little changes in words, because of the connotations that word, words carry with them, they may change the feelings of the people. Okay. Now, two more sentences. A group of businessmen is funding the association. So, these people give money to the association. Versus a clique of business tycoons is bankrolling the interest group. So, the words clique, business tycoons, and bankrolling definitely have an impact on the reader. The, this impact, this phrase, the first phrase does not cause that impact. So the number two is definitely a criticism to A, to number one. Let's look at this one. Court upholds smokers' rights. Upholds means that they uh, give a positive uh, result. Court favors smokers' privileges. So, favors, favori favoritism, this is not a good word. Favors means that the court is not fair. Is unfair. Okay? And instead of rights, they say privileges. Number three, court denies non smokers' rights. Of course, if a court favors smokers' privileges, then the court denies non smokers' rights. So notice that this. And shows this what seems to be the attitude or view of the writer so we can see that the writer here is in favor of non smokers okay number four court tramples on non smokers constitutional freedoms definitely the writer here is in favor of non-smokers. Probably the writer himself or herself is a non-smoker. Last one. Hyperact no, not last one. Okay, these five. Hyperactive children to be given medication. Very neutral piece of information. Hyperactive children to be drugged. Oh, oh, yes, medication is drugs, but the word drug has a very negative connotation. Chemical to be tested on hyperactive children. Oh, no, tested does not have a good connotation either. Yes. Children to be guinea pigs in biological experiments. Wow, this is definitely against this. And this one, simple pill holds hope for hyperactive children. This is in favor of the, the medication. So notice how 
we see different points of view of different of the writers, different writers, different points of view, in favor, against, etc. Then we have others. For example, we have this one. Senator Jones announces he supports funding bill or reveals or boasts or admits. So every time you change the word, the reactions change, the connotation change. These tires are made with non-bouncing rubber, sluggish rubber, lazy rubber, non-resilient rubber, and high hysteresis rubber. This last one sounds very, very, um, it's, it sounds very, um, Technical, super technical. While the words lazy or sluggish sounds too informal. Lazy has a negative connotation, also sluggish. It sounds super negative. Then what? The, sec the following one says, shall we support the demands of the patriots? But if we change for, shall we support the demands of the terrorists or the guerrillas? That changes the meaning, changes the denotation, and changes the connotation. What if we say, shall we support the greediness of the soldiers? Greediness. So, notice, you change one simple word, and the denotation could change, the connotation definitely changes. Another one, Senator Smith reports that he knew nothing about the scandal. Reports is very different from claims or insists that he knew nothing about the scandal. So notice that the choice of words of the writer immediately changes the reaction on the people who is reading the article. This is very well known by people who sell stuff. Yes, advertisers, marketing. Look at this one. Should students in the dorms be set adrift without the guidance of a curfew or should they be encouraged toward responsible behavior? And compare this with should students in the dorms be subjected to the restraints of arbitrary curfews? Or should they be free to develop their own timetables? So, which words are powerful words? Definitely, this person is in favor of, uh, of the curfew. That's why he says, the guidance of a curfew. Okay? But the second one, restraints of arbitrary curfews okay so in against the curfews yes and then free to develop their own timetables is one thing responsible behavior is a different thing see again how the choice of words of the writer changes not only the denotation but also the connotation read this this is this is the explanation read it okay you have um let me see oh sorry it goes too fast my client has a right to compensation uh, but this is with the, the, the discussion about the words rights, nobody goes against the word rights. So whenever you say rights, immediately people pay attention and they are not against it. They are in favor of it. Okay, remember to do your homework. That's the homework, okay? If you have questions, feel free to ask me in the WhatsApp group. Goodbye.